if not, uh, then just send me directly as well. But I think if you could fill the form and then send me directly, that is, that is much better. I think just the form is uh, maybe Nardos or anyone, if you can share. Okay. Um, okay, awesome. Thanks. Um, and also this time we, you will start so the with the machine in AWS and hopefully we will also arrange somehow you will be able to use um, from there AWS CLI, which is the just to be able to access a few more options like uh, in particular in the next week. So there will be a, a continuation of the same similar project, but with the problem set different. So while this it's going to be very similar, you know, front end, back end, Kafka and Airflow schedule, but this time it is for language. But next week you would basically start, I mean, we'll introduce in the middle and we'll put the challenge document in the same folder. Um, but that one is for developing um, trading uh, in cryptocurrency, for example. Um, and you will be mostly focused building a pipeline for multi-users, like in anyone, any trader, uh, to be able to backtest. So what the concept of backtesting, whatever, we will introduce some um, tutorials, but it's kind of, you will be preparing ability for any investor, you call it, or any trusted person to be able to backtest. Um, and so, and in order to do that, there will be some um, elements that that are very similar with this one, but you add a few things, so we'll come to that. Anyways, um, has anyone, as Nardos was asking, has anyone read the documentation? I think I've heard earlier also Mohammed was saying that he must have looked at it. And so anyone else who wants to explain their understanding of current project, basically this week and next week project, but uh, this week's project as it's outlined in the project document. Anyone who likes to attempt? Not an element lesser, yeah. Okay, I think this week's uh, this week's challenge is more related on uh, the data engineering as aspect and collecting uh, speech to text converted data. So uh, I think uh, I think we'll, in the title it says like speech to text, but I think when I'm reading it like on the task specific. Uh, I think it is a text to speech. So we give the users a text and we somehow collect the speech version of the text. I think basically the idea is that and the tools we are gonna use are uh, Kafka, Airflow and Spark. Uh, Kafka, uh, all, we will set up like, we will somehow learn how to set up the Kafka. And after that, we will provide a tag in order for the user to submit the speech version of that text. And um, probably most of the tasks are related to, like, so most related to that, like setting up and also providing the, uh, somehow a proper flow, a proper pipeline for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's a good summary. Thanks, uh, Naya. So, anyone else who wants to expand or? So, I think we can just, in the interest of time, I will just walk through. I think that's correct. It will be, so in principle, so there might be some texts that are left uh referring to week four uh let's say if there is that's because in the past there was also another in week four or week five that people had done actual like you did much more slightly different um you did much nlp from 
actually the, the version of prompt engineering. And in the past, we were also allowing people to train um, their own network. Um, and there will be probably an opportunity in week 11 where actually you do some kind of image uh, similar to the NLP, but also machine vision uh, related stuff. But in this case, it's a data engineering project, uh, as Matan was saying. And the element uh, is to try to set up or like put it this way. If you were now to collect street, a lot of the language models really depend on the amount of data. And, you know, English is very, you know, you can now speak to everybody, including Alexa, you know, it's kind of Google, OK Google, like uh, Google Assistant, and many others, because that's basically English has a lot of training data. But if you are not trying to do the same thing in, in some language like, you know, Swahili or uh, Amharic or, or Aminya or Tigrinya, other languages that are in Africa that are less represented, then you basically don't have that much data. And the basic data you can find actually out there in the open uh, for your training was 20 hours of data. You know, 20 hours of data is very nothing. Just as comparison, Whisper, which is now uh, the language model that was open licensed by OpenAI that has that was trained on 680,000 hours of data. It of course is has so much um, for different languages, but that's like that's huge. Now think of it this way: if you now want to collect data and you want to let's say people to read a text. So of course you can't ask most people in a normal time. You can only, you can try, you, you want it in sentence forms or if by maximum, let's say a couple of lines or maximum a paragraph so that you try to understand, to be able to um, reliably have a certain, um, a text corresponding to a speech. You know, it's kind of because you have to align them, you know, which text corresponds to which, which speech part. So you are you're trying to collect. So usually people do it in a sentence. And within a sentence, you you know, the error rate is gonna be smaller, at least you know, when you are matching, uh, stretching and stuff like that. So now let's imagine how much when one one sentence, how long does it take? So for example, if I'm reading one of the sentences this week, Ten Academy is your client. And this is basically about 30 seconds or like that. So let's say in one minute, a few sentences, two sentences or a, a, a one long sentence, right? Now, how much a one hour means? So that's just that one hour, basically 60 of that. And, and if you want to collect now an, an average, a good, a good hour of data for uh, this type of training is 3000. So when you want to do 3000, you basically need uh, now 3000 hours. So 3000 hours, like now, if you are asking one person, like to read one message, and now you will take about 20 people or 60 people, let's say to read 60, uh, one hour, and then 3000 means 60,000, three, um, you know, 60 th times 3000, that's basically you would get uh, 1800 basically number of people you need to serve or you need to reach to about 180,000 um, trainees or sorry 180,000 people to be able to actually uh, to collect about 3,000 hours one time but then you need also intonation you need also different elements for it so right so which actually means you need to collect per that one sentence um, to collect male, female, you know, old or um, kind of old or young or, you know, different parts, like, uh, and also some kind of, you know, variation in how people read and how people understand. So you basically, let's say 10 times at least per one. So that basically would just be, is really about at least 1.8 million to 2 million people. Now, if you wanna do that in three months, you probably need to, you know, you can calculate what it does, that means. It, you basically require 
per second or per minute, you have to reach really a huge number of people. Now, your system, which is collecting whatever, which is synchronizing, is really the, needs to be redundant and fault tolerant. And you, you really need some kind of bigger system that orchestrates all of this. And that's where Kafka comes, okay? Kafka is a way, it's basically, you, it's a queue system. It can, you can serve 1 million messages per second to it. So by message, it doesn't matter. That message can be text, audio, video, whatever you want, but just anything that is in, in, in bytes, you basically give it and then it stores phasefully. And then it's basically, it, it will give you some form of like, you know, put this and then another person or another system can read that in their own time. So even if your systems are like slow, but you really can't store everything, can't just put things on Kafka as you're basically store, let's say, and then you can faithfully read it whenever you need it, right? So that's really the whole point of Kafka. Kafka is this publish, subscribe, or message um, uh, m message protocol, like so it's kind of like message passing protocol. So this is really every system everywhere uh, in the world, that any big system needs that kind of queue system. Even Java, for example, or stack systems, they are based on that, right? So everything requires some form of putting something in, in place and then at a given time and a certain cycle rate, collecting that and then reading and then uh, computing as, as you need it. But you need a phaseful system. And that's why Google has PubSub, you know, um, Amazon has different, but one of them is, I said, um, uh, it's called uh, forgot now, um, but like Kafka is the industry standard for that, and a lot of a lot, you know, uh, it's whether you call it um, LinkedIn or so many companies use Kafka. So if you just uh, uh, So if you look there, there's basically almost every big company, 35% of the Fortune 500 companies use Apache Kafka. That basically means, you know, there's so many big, big, big companies that are using Kafka that rely on Kafka, okay? So that's what you are trying to set up and then to use, to build around it. So that would be a central piece, but then you, you will build a um, system around it. And that system, basically you have a text that you want to serve. You expect about, let's imagine in three months, you want to reach about 3 million people. So think of that system. So you want to be able to reach 3 million people can use your system and be able to get a text and then they read and then the audio actually then returns to your server. And then the server will basically be able to kind of First, do some kind of checking whether this is correct. And that one you can do in different things. But, um, and then the audio together with the tag, in this case, the, the text tag or the sentence that they read, you basically store it in S3, basically, or in a, in, a, in a form of data lake, right? So the data engineering task is trying to set up some kind of labeling mechanism, data labeling, in this case, the text is being labeled by speech. That's what you're trying to do. And you know everything is here, and this is a group work, and the data is there, you know, and the uh, plant is us. We, let's say Ten Academy wants to do this with a good system. It will basically be in the future power um, different under-resourced languages through by building whatever you build by extending them uh, to try to really get more training data for different African languages, and. Uh, the different things you know them i'm not just in the interest of time and you know your groups so basically the bold means like the group lead or that means the spoke person for that group in any whenever we want to communicate or that person needs to really make sure that everybody is working and kind of is represented and all that um, and this is also all of the user in that group are also in one uh, machine so your machine will be referenced by this. So that basically this is a URL you'll connect. We'll send you also a little bit of guide on how to connect. And hopefully today um, we will set up the machine and you must be able to connect. Everybody at least, a few people at least the lead or a few people from that group must connect and they must have the knowledge uh, about it. 
and so the instructions are you are working you know you are we might help you to install Kafka and uh, we might give you just how to interact with it so you probably will build more on using Kafka and learning about Kafka's building around it uh, instead of installing it so let's see just uh, that this afternoon we'll update you in the tutorial uh, about that and your work is you create a uh, you know a Kafka so in this case create Kafka cluster means you learn about Kafka cluster if the cluster is created and given to you the access um, but then you basically need to understand what it means brokers you know the kafka systems the kafka has um, brokers and then also uh, subscriber and the publisher or in, in, uh, consumer and producer in kafka terms so a consumer is basically someone or a system that takes whatever is put in kafka it would consume it and process it and that consumer can be a producer can send back again to kafka with different topic for other systems so kafka is really you know it's a centralized uh, message anyone can send message through it and that's really the message passing platform right and then you would use spark or you would try to form how to process also a parallelized spark is basically you know especially pi spark it's a, Py, a parallelized version of um, a distributed version of python you can do you know things that you will not do normally in python um with pi spark and it has its ecosystem is very strong in the industry, especially in the data engineering stack. It's a big deal because most of the time we are talking about big data and in big data uh, areas, you really cannot load things in memory because you have like, you know, for example, if you think of uh, GPT-3, GPT-3 was trained on 400 gigabyte of data and they can't fit it in memory. So you must distribute and do handle that. And usually something, something like PySpark will be used uh, in that scenario. And then, of course, you will block everything um, as a data engineer uh, for other people to, to look at. It's also, of course, your portfolio. The tutorials, this is the introduction to week challenge. And then there will be later uh, by Azaria on Kafka, Airflow, and Spark, just the, the introduction. And then also, because you would be using some kind of uh, orchestration, you and Stasia would be uh, tomorrow on Airflow and DBT. And then in the um, uh, also in the afternoon, Nardos and Azaria, would, would, especially for those people who are not that familiar on, or that not from the software background, they would talk about uh, using accessing APIs and creating APIs. In particular, you, they will allow you to, to play and, and feel through Postman. And Postman is just, you would easily be able to interact with APIs using Postman. Um, and then, you know, on Wednesday, they will be on setting up Kafka cluster, EDDR, even if we set up, she will take you through how it's set up uh, as well as also just uh, different elements and then on the front end what is you know how to build mobile and web app frameworks which is also because we will ask you in week nine there will be um, another web three project that you are a, you we ask you to build a mobile app uh, for basically a, a web three project and that one uses either um, flutter or anything so we start learning about you know expecting what it takes you know between web apps and mobile apps um, and then on um, big data with spark rahel will be hopefully giving you a tutorial on on thursday okay so the references are there i think there's extensive reference hopefully uh, but of course you will also be sharing any one question because i have to i have another call to go so i will allow like azaria and uh, Nardos, Anastasia, and Yudidia, if they are there, they will continue if you have more questions. But one question I can answer and go. Natnaya? Uh, I have one question. Like you mentioned, like there will be uh, verification or checking of the uh, audio part, yep. uh, the audio. Uh, how would that be performed? Sorry? Uh, a high level description, how we are going to do that. So it's, you basically, the audio will be recorded in the browser. And so you would, in your web app, you would basically record the audio. And then you have to send the recorded audio to Kafka. And then from there, you process it. Okay, but like, is there a verification? Like if someone, somebody missed, missed actually the recording wasn't correct, is there uh -huh. going to be a verification so, process? Yeah, so it, it is basically, that's where 
you would use, for example, uh, a basic, for example, you can use Google API to check, or in this case, we will probably set up Whisper as well, some other model that would just give you the correction. For example, given that speech, if you have a very crude model, you know, it will translate for you that one, the speech into text, and then you can check, you know, what is, whether it's good or not, whether it was kind of okay, right? So on the fly, you'd be able to check with a previous model, with a model that is trained on a 20 hours of data, for example. Oh, okay. So you, you would do, that's where price bar comes in, to do some form of pre-processing on the, in, in including checking um, before saving it, or kind of giving it a quality metric for, for the recurring. Because if someone really just, also if it's empty, if they didn't recur, you know, you shouldn't save that because that's noise. So you try to get some form of um, quality metric on, on the recurring. And you would use another AI model to actually do the, you know, very simple AI model um, to do that for you. And there are many other techniques, of course. Uh, in the reference, I think you should be able to see something like that. Um, So training data on machine learning, it's, um, I think, yeah, some, some of them might have uh, that, so, but we will also share. Okay. So I have to go, but then you can ask questions and then um, just, you know, the tutor team, please just be in standby until questions are run out and answer some questions that are raised. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. <coughs>
topic-based division to give you a single platform to actually publish and sub publish and subscribe to and from respectively. Uh, so how do we use the uh, text to speech uh, processing with Kafla now? Kafla is just uh, a streaming, uh, you have said it's a streaming. So how can we use the text to speech translation with this tool? Um, okay, so like one simple example would be um, there are users that are going to be recording audios, right? Uh, so at the end of the day, an audio is a stream of bytes. Um, so Kafka, at the end of the day, what you can do is you can uh, publish those stream of bytes into Kafka. So for example, you'd have your user interface, um, which would take in, which, which would actually, okay, so yeah, which would actually receive an audio from the user. Um, and that user audio is then produced into a topic. And you would have any other application, any other backend application, it might be, um, a machine learning model that wants access to that audio. It can actually subscribe from that stream. Uh, it can be any other thing. It, ca it can be that quality check uh, Nathaniel was talking about. It can subscribe from that stream. It can, so they can subscribe from that single entity, which is um, encapsulating everything, right? And so from that is one flow from the user um, where the user is, in this case, a publisher and any of your backend applications are the consumers of that, that application, right? And so another case, what the user is actually going to be recording is um, the text that is shown to him, right? And so that text can be found in maybe a file storage in your backend, backend service. And um, from that, you can have um, a, simple, a simple application that will um, take that file and actually produce it into Kafka. Um, and your front-end application can consume that text from Kafka uh, and show it to the user, right? And so the user can actually be both a publisher and a subscriber at the same time. Um, so it is having that um, it is having that flow of that publish subscribe model that we want you to keep in mind throughout the week. I hope that is clear. Is, is that clear? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, Brahan. Okay, thank you. Uh, for more, for me also, it's not clear. Uh, what is our, our first step now? Can we install the, Kaf the Kafka using the link that provided on the uh, resource? Or they, they you can share the account? I don't know. I, I did not understand the first step. So please, maybe. If you are elaborating. Okay, so I'm not sure on that as well. Um, I'm not completely sure you'd have to go to the installation of Kafka. Um, there is um, an AWS service that actually handles all of the installation process and we might be providing that. Um, and so um, I think keep an eye out on Slack. Um, but yeah, you've already been given access to the EC2 instance. So you can install, you can start installing Kafka on that EC2 instance and start to work um, at the moment. And when we provide that service and we give you those broker endpoints, uh, you can migrate to that easily because it's just a change of line. Um, yes, Margaret. Um, my question is where exactly, on which platform exactly does this text to speech um happen is it still on kafka or that will have to write um, some no no so there is no there is no machine learning model you'd have to make um so you can assume that there is an a text-to-speech engine um and so you're just building the data pipeline right you're the data engineer in charge of building that pipeline not the model ah uh, okay so we don't need to write any code that translates text to speech. Um, no, no, you okay. don't. Uh, yes, nothing. Uh, are the machines ready, or we should? Um, uh, 
I believe so. Um, that might not be the case if maybe things haven't been configured properly. I'm not sure, but they, they will definitely be ready. Um, so they are, they are ready, but there are people who haven't submitted uh, the, the info. So uh, we're going to give you guys all access at the same time. Maybe if you try, if your group has already set up, if everyone is already sub has submitted or, and everything, maybe you can try. Which group are you? And you can try and confirm. If it's not yeah, working right now. I think I'm in group two, and some, uh, the first time I tried, it returns like no route to host. Um, I think it's timing, it's, it's connection timeout still. Uh, I've tried it three or four times. Okay, uh, permission and tonight or connection timeout? Maybe uh, let's see if everyone in the group has set up and we'll get back to you on Slack. We can yeah. update you guys. So, uh, so, we, so that we can do this really fast. If those of you that did not submit, again, submit really fast so we get this out of the way and you guys can focus on the challenge fast. Okay, you can keep asking if you have more questions. Is, is that a question, Margaret, or? Um, yes, I just wanted to, if we're building a data pipeline, I just wanted to get an overview of um, the design pipeline, like from start to finish, where, yeah. Does my question make sense? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure uh, Nardus correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's one of the tasks uh, for you to actually complete. Um, so yeah, um, I believe maybe on the report there should be a submission regarding that. I'm sorry, what was the question? I did not do that. Um, it was the design pipeline for how we're going to create um, the pipeline. Uh, okay. Uh, just the design flow or the, the flow chart. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is it on the submission? You mean on the submission? Um, I'm not sure I get your question. I haven't checked the submissions yet. But okay, yeah. Um, yeah, th yeah, that's the case. Um, yeah, you're definitely going to understand some of the concept, the components that take place, um, while you build on the project. But yeah, keeping in mind that just the general public subscribe model and, uh, yeah, going along the challenge, you'll definitely have a clear, uh, understanding of what you're going to need to do. Um, yeah, but the basic thing is the front end is there, the back end is there and Kafka is in between uh, handling all of those interactions between those components. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah, Mohamed? I have a simple question. So basically we are using uh, uh, the, the e ETL uh, method, am I right? Um, okay, so the text corpus is already extracted, um, so it depends on, it will definitely depend on your approach, right? So from that extracted data, if you're doing a transformation and you're loading it into Kafka, yes, it will be the ETL process. Um, if there is any loading process that happens um, where you're simply dumping things and you are doing some transformations later on, um, you'll, do, you'll be using the ELT. So it depends on the approach you decide to follow. Okay, thank you. No problem. 
So that's it. I think we can stop the recording and call this a day. Yeah, yes, nothing.